I'm really very, very delighted to uh, be here uh, because I met Jonathan uh, about six, eight months ago. I think we're at the uh, Business Journal, and I'm very involved in uh, my own charity with Education Works. And he and I uh, had a good discussion. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be doing some work together. Uh, but uh, he's a very, very good friend, and uh, he's currently CEO of Reader's uh, Franchise Corporation, has proven record of visionary leadership, gained through 20 years in the real estate, technology, franchise, and multinational industries. He has held senior level positions with real estate, financial and technology companies, including General Electric, Provado, Transocean, Atomic Tangerine. Jonathan began his career at Accenture. He's developed in real estate and restaurants in USA, along with Costa Rica and Peru. Jonathan is a sought-after speaker and has had appeared on CNN, ABC, BBC, NBC, and Bloomberg, along with articles published in the Wall Street Journal, Investors uh, Business Daily, London Times, Washington Post, CIO Magazine, Restaurant Business Magazine, QSR. Jonathan holds a bachelor's degree in physics from the University of California. I didn't know that. In Berkeley, and holds the government securities license in a 3, 7, and 63, along with a real estate, California real estate license. Jonathan currently sits on the board of directors and is the head of the audit committee for uh, Meals on Wheels, a nonprofit that feeds over 1 million meals a year to senior citizens in San Francisco. So, without further ado, let's welcome Jonathan to Jewish Business Network. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Mark. Um, it's great. Uh, I'm getting now used to uh, Philadelphia since I've been here uh, a whopping nine months. Um, and I'm actually enjoying it. The, uh, the place has been great. Though I, I will have to tell you a, a story. Um, when I get into the presentation, you'll see. But we're going globally with uh, Rita's. Uh, we're opening up in China in two months, India, a number of countries. But uh, last week, I sent a team over to uh, Israel because we're looking at having our first stores open in Israel in March. Uh, next year. So I'm getting these text messages last week when the uh, the nor'easter was in and the snow storms up and I'm at my office in Bucks County looking at the snow coming down and they're like we're having a great time we're out till two in the morning and the weather's fantastic and there was a little debate in my mind uh, if they should let them come home or not. <laughs> but uh, so anyways it's, it's been great I've enjoyed the uh, the lifestyle and, and fun and between uh, I still spend half my time in California uh, my home is in San Francisco but uh, Got a good place here in Philadelphia, so I'm enjoying it. So try to do this as interactive as possible. Um, you know, I'm, I'm more into uh, lots of questions and stuff like that. So I'll take you through the presentation. You guys are lucky because you knew Rita's. I didn't know Rita's. Uh, literally the first day on the job, um, Rita's was bought by a private equity firm out of New York. They uh, we worked together on this deal, and then they they sent me out here to run the company. The first day on the job, I had never had water ice. Didn't even know what that word meant. Um, and I was kind of debating, well, what the heck is water ice? It's like, and you can't say that anywhere outside of Philadelphia. Um, we're doing, a, we're putting 200 units in Southern California right now. And you have, you have to say Italian ice, because when you say water ice, you get the strangest look on people's faces. <laughs> so, so here I am, I go, and, and we have a, a company store. So they lined up 18 different flavors of water ice. And, and for me, in my recollection, because there is no product like this, uh, on the west coast at all. So in my vision, I'm thinking it's like a snow cone or shaved ice if you know, I've been to Hawaii and those places. And you're thinking, okay, this is what, you know, how could something like this be special? Until you try it for the first time and there is nothing like I've had this anywhere in the world like it. So I went through literally and tried all 18 flavors and you know, you're like, wow, this actually truly tastes like mango or which happens to be my favorite flavor um, and all these other flavors. Then the second part comes in is custard. I've never had custard before. Because on the West Coast, if you say custard, it is that goopy stuff they put on top of pies that you kind of always, as a kid, you pushed off to the side and you eat all the good stuff. So I'm like, custard. So you try the custard, and it's the custard is amazing. I, I wouldn't recommend it every day because it is really good and really, really rich. Then, you, then they go, now you have to mix these two together because our most popular um, product is the gelato. And you, mi you mix them together, and you start eating it. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to mix these two things together. They're great separately. And then when you mix it together, as you know, uh, it's amazing products. So I've got to learn now the stuff. I've gotten to travel around the world, and we start tasting these products. And it's funny, like as we go into China right now, no one's ever had anything like this. And, and this is one of, the, I think, the real advantages for the growth that we have here is nobody's had stuff like this. 
Um, kind of a little quick background. Um, right now, there's 600 plus units in the United States with deals that we have signed internationally. Um, we'll add another 400 between uh, U.S. and just 200 alone in California, in Southern California, um, over the next four years. And just basically, if anybody's ever done business in California, it's about like doing business in New York City. You have to go through three million levels of bureaucracy just to explain why you're opening this this product and how is it impacting the environment. So uh, once we get that done, it, it should be uh, it should be great. Um, why, why did we buy this company and, and what's kind of our plans? So you guys all know Reed is, uh, it's got uh, a very strong brand recognition. Um, Reed is has started, had expanded a little bit in the south, wasn't that successful actually. Uh, they went down to Florida, did okay. They went down to some of the southern states and didn't do that great. A lot of it was the company, the previous management, did put the energy necessary into doing a successful open. When you come in, you've got to really build up a brand awareness because the product's great, but if you don't get people to understand it and to know it, then you have uh, um, the kind of lack of success that we saw. And so one of our real focuses as we now start to expand is really going in with a huge amount of marketing dollars into that market, but also high, basically working with the franchisees that have the, the strong relationship building. The, the thing about, and since you know Rita's, the thing about Rita's is it's very family oriented. You're taking in your kids, you're taking in the families, and you want a place where the franchisee knows you, their kids went to school with your kids, or they, they have that community relationship. And in the past, there was there were some situations in the South where you, you hired franchisees that they kind of had a very different mentality. I'll, I'll call it, and not to knock if any of you guys own subways, not to knock the, the subway mentality, but you go into a subway, <laughs> You're basically going in there to get food, you get served, and you want to get in and out quickly. There's no relationship. You may have, a, you know, you're lucky to have a conversation with, with uh, the person that gives you your sandwich. Whereas in Rita's, you know, this is a place when you take your family, you want to know the person. You want to have that, that feeling that, hey, these people trust you and they're, and they're good with you. So from one of the things that we're looking at is as we start to expand out is what can we do to not only expand within the U.S., but there's huge opportunities internationally. And one thing I'll tell you about everything we're doing international. So if you are traveling and you're in any of these countries we're going into and you try Reed is we are still sourcing 100% of the products from here. So the actual water ice ingredients are actually made um, in northern Philly. I guess northeast Philly would be the right one. Um, <laughs> it's definitely not northern Philly or North Philly. <laughs> but and so literally everywhere that you go, we're shipping the product over. So everything goes from from Philadelphia to Port Elizabeth and then. Uh, to China, India, and all these other countries. And the same thing goes for the custard. Currently, we produce all the custard in southern uh, New Jersey, and then we ship it around the world. So interesting, to get to China, it actually takes about 40 days to ship the product from here all the way through, and then goes to the Panama Canal, and it's, it's kind of ridiculous. But the advantage there is we can actually guarantee the quality. Um, and like a lot of other chains where they'll start buying products locally and sourcing locally, the issue is you don't know what you're getting. And, you know, there's a lot of countries in the world where I'm very careful what I eat, very careful about I want to know what's, what's in it. Here the advantage um, is the custard will taste exactly the same, the water rice will taste exactly the same.